Hi everyone, here's an in-depth look at Circuit Gillis Villeneuve at Montreal in the ProMaster. Around here I'm running a lowish downforce setup with 15 on the front and 9.5 on the rear with a C1. Now around here, very small setup tweaks make a huge difference in the drivability. You can go from one click a rear wing to the car being um, sliding too much at the rear and having to catch at mid-corner to one click in the other direction and it feeling a bit understeering, you're not being able to rotate it on the brakes as much as you like. So this is a balance that works for me, however it's going to vary drastically depending on your driving setup, how much wheel input you like to use, how much trail braking you do. This is what I'd call probably a higher downforce setup for this track, but I like the plan to feel the car around here. Running very soft springs to give it a lot of mechanical grip. And I haven't bottomed out the ride height, just want to give it a bit of clearance over the bumps. Now you're just making sure you get a clean exit. Ah, oh, the lap here is a 32.5, which is solid. This is one of those tracks that really the lap time comes down as you get more confidence and you push the car more. Now, braking, it's very important to hit the um, turn one apex, so you're going to be completely offline the turn two and cost a lot of time. So you're wanting unbraking just for the one marker. Turning in, there's the apex. Clip it, but don't bash it. Just get your wheel up on it nicely. And that should put you about the middle of the track to take the line into two. So you're hovering around the middle and getting the car into two and kind of sticking at the apex. It takes the car a while to rotate around this corner and you feel like you're sitting there a while, but if you get in the throttle early, it will just push it out wide and you'll um, add too much length to the track. Just pushing it out wide, taking a nice reasonable line. Now coming up into this next corner, you're braking um, before the one marker and down two gears because you'll be in fifth on entry and you go down to third. Now it's quite important here to get the car broke, um, on the brakes and turned fairly early. You don't really want to be leaving it to the last second is if you enter last second you're kind of opening up the angle you're having to do and it's very hard to get the car back to a to the second apex, so you kind of want to take a more shallow line into the turn one, which will open up turn two a little better. So I got it in there, I didn't bounce over the curbs, I took about as much as I could get away with before If you get the underbody at all caught on that inside curb it will bounce and then you're probably going into the wall. Then I could bring the car back to open up the second apex and got up it about as much as you could. You really want to open the throttle up and it feels like once you get off that second corner you're near full throttle when the car's still pointing at the wall. Which is just the nature of this track. You have to build up to it. You just have to trust the car's going to stick. Just full throttle through this section, hug tight to the right. Now my braking marker's here. On that where the white bit of wall goes to the grey bit of wall. And you're braking hard. And you want to turn the car in when you're still a fair bit on the brakes. So I'm braking the car in a straight line. I'm kind of directioning it out towards the outside wall. Because that will give you a wider entry point. Because as, as you're kind of moving over into the braking point, the car's kind of still pointing to the right. So you're allowed to open up the corner a bit on this outside bit of track there. And I have a fair amount of wheel lock in while the brakes are still decreasing. So you want to get the front left wheel up on this inside curb to really open up the corners, just sort of like the previous corner sequence actually. If you're wide through here, you're not going to make this second apex. 
So you get the first one and turn back to the second apex. You want to use a lot of the curb up on it and then just modulate the throttle and run the car out to the wall as far as you're comfortable doing basically. Now we're braking before the one marker. You can go either down two gears or down three gears into here. Two gears is usually adequate. And again, you're sort of trailing it in. So, I've done three. Sometimes you only do two. Depends if you feel you have the time for it. And quite a lot of steering lock while the brakes are still decreasing. You really want to do that on entry here is it um, will get the nose down. Now you really need to get this first apex. I probably was a little bit greedy on entry and bumped it a bit, which threw the car offline. Around this track, it's all about hitting the apexes. If you're wide on the first apex, since most of them um, are like two apex corners or corners that follow into one another, you tend to push yourself offline in the second corner and lose a stack of time. So you want to be conservative on your initial approach which is a little bit of an unusual tactic in this car because this car is often king of the later apexes, but you really do want to apex quite early around here. So yeah, up on that corner, I've just bumped it a little bit, which has unsettled the car, but it hasn't pushed it offline too much and I can get it back to the second apex fine and run it out. close to the wall. So this corner here has actually quite a few different lines that people like to take. Now I prefer to take the line of, you have to apex late of course, could have brake, turn it in apex late in the corner, but I don't like to run it really deep and then rotate it hard and pull it back. I like to keep it fairly tight to the um, apex at all times. So I'm braking well before the one marker, braking quite hard. But I'm keeping it tight to the corner. It's all the car kind of travels in a nice, nice, neat line around the apex. And accelerating off. The other alternate line through here is you go a bit deeper under brakes then sort of rotate the car around here and don't really bring it back to the apex until later in the corner, which gives you um, later braking and a more straight exit. But I just find you're adding too much track distance around here. I'm liking to bring it back to the apex around here as opposed to that line more bringing it back around here. In something like an F1 car that had a lot of power that you really wanted to get the car straight before applying the throttle, that would probably have a bit more advantage. But because this car isn't so traction limited, um, you can carry a fair amount of lock into the corner whilst getting on the throttle. I like to get down to first. And just smoothly exiting. You do get a little bit of wheel spin, but that's fine. So now you've put the clean lap together and you're coming up to the make or break point. As you can see, I have a few zero X's. And it's usually from this corner. So I'm wanting to break just after two marker. I was just noticing, curiously, I was kind of hesitating off the throttle a little bit on entry, which is weird. You shouldn't do that. Just kind of coming down a bit and throttle before getting off the brakes. At the two marker, you're down three gears, harden the brakes, still trailing it in, still heavy on the brakes after the turning phase of the corners initiated. Um, you really have to trail as it both reduces the braking distance and gets the front of the nose down. You really need to hit this first apex corner, but don't don't bounce it. You see a lot of GT cars bouncing up of that. You can't do it here. You've got to keep it on the um, red bit. Make back the second apex and just accelerate at the wall. You know when you've got that corner right. Uh, it should just 
um, flow with two smooth apexes. If you're trying to take too much braking zone on entry, then um, quite often you miss the first apex and you have to bring it back for the second one and you lose a stack of time. So a little bit conservative on braking and just flowing through them. I didn't get too close to the wall there. This track's all about the right line. Um, I know every track's about that to a certain extent, but if you are offline a little bit at this track, there is no bringing the car back. Um, there's basically just one distinct line through a corner, and if you clip any of the curbs, you're getting punished through that section. So that was 32.5. And here's full speed.